Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we've got several things to talk about. I'm pretty sure as you clicked on the video, your eyes immediately went over here first. And I always do this. We're going to deal with the systems that are more likely to affect land first, and that would be over here in the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. We're going to have to watch for homegrown mischief like we talked about yesterday. And it looks like we can now definitely see the definable feature that is going to eventually cause this trouble and this is a tropical wave in the northwest caribbean not really sure why it's not labeled a tropical wave on the nhc surface map because it was trackable all, all the way out here i didn't bother tracking it to africa but i'm pretty sure this is a tropical wave in here if not it's a surface trough no big deal but you can see what's going on here you can see the frontal boundary extending over the gulf tropical wave moving northwest towards a frontal boundary that just sounds like trouble doesn't it and it is. And in terms of the upper pattern here, we have an upper low over Hispaniola, an upper trough over the northern gulf, and then we've got some ridging in between. It's a little bit squeezed, but we've got more room up in the gulf than we had because the Texas heat ridge is still is way up here. Back when we had dawn, if you might remember when dawn came across here, we had easterlies screaming aloft all the way across the gulf and sheared into pieces because the ridge was extending all the way into the northern gulf. The ridge is a little bit farther back this time, so there's a little bit more room for this to have some upper anticyclonic flow above it, which would allow air to spread out aloft take down the pressures and allow development to occur. Now this is going to be a slow process here. If this does develop, we've got a large area of heat that needs to get bundled here. But this is going to be ready to go. And the reason why is look down in the Eastern Pacific. Notice this right down here. See the void right here south of Costa Rica and Panama all the way across to the west here. This is interesting because it means that the monsoon trough is way up here over Central America. In other words, we're going to get no development in the Eastern Pacific anytime soon, at least in the typical monsoonal area visible on this image here. This means that this is going to have no competition from down here, none, which means it's on its own over here and has the heat all ready to bundle for itself and it's ready to hog it all here as it moves into the Gulf. And this could be something that we need to watch for several days. Starting this weekend, we may see this try to develop. The GFS finally gets it going in a few days, five, six days, and then brings it west over towards Texas by day eight here, which is what this map is. And you can see Cadia over here. And this is the water vapor imagery out of the western US. The reason I'm showing you this is because one of the main steering influences for any system that does try to develop in the Gulf is going to be this short wave here moving into the Pacific Northwest and southern Canada. This is going to be key as we move on here. If we look at the GFS ensembles, 500 millibar heights and anomalies day three, we can see this trough showing up in here, forcing the ridge off to the east. So now look, there's a weakness in here actually over Texas for one. There's a little bit of a weak part in the ridge. You can see where the ensemble mean has our little system, this little kink in the 588 ISO hips here. And this is going to try to move northwest towards the Texas coast, which is going to be great for rainfall for these folks. But then it won't be able to continue that way for too awful long because if we get out to the next day, you can see that this starts to flatten out because this ridge is going to try to hang tough. And you can see where the system is trying to hang out near the northwest Gulf Coast here. And it's going to find it hard to just move right into this ridge. And by the time we get out to day six, you can see that the trough is moving across the east now. The ridge is right here, which means moving directly towards it to the northwest is going to be difficult. So if it's still around by now, it could scoot in really fast during those first four days but if it's still sitting around you now see this alley open to the northeast so now it has a tug towards the northern Gulf Coast to the northeast because this ridge is trying to block it from coming west. And what the ensembles eventually do is day eight. They have this moving on. They don't quite get it off to the northeast and it'll eventually allow it to sneak and make its way westward under that banana ridge into southern Texas and northern Mexico. So there are some steering influences that are going to be complicated with this. We'll have to see if we get development and once we do really hone in on where this is going to try to go. We could have it sneak off real fast by day three, just have it move right into northern Mexico and south Texas, or we could have it waiting around, getting stuck in here, and then having this trough come across and try to pull it in a different direction while the ridge pulls it to the west, which would cause the steering currents to be weak and have it meander around. This is the European for day seven. And notice that it really tries to wind this up by that time, a week from today, just west of the 
east rather of the Mexico Texas border and you can see what we've got we got the trough coming across the northeast and we got the ridge back over that death ridge over the four corners region and this is this is pretty possible here especially since the European is on board with this we'll have to see what we see this looking like in a few days but if it actually has this long to sit around a week over the Gulf of Mexico the waters are very warm here and I'm going to show you the anomalies in a minute but this has definitely got a lot of energy that's ready to go here and we've seen a lot of storms that can sneak up and wind up pretty fast off the Texas coast hopefully this would stay weak and just bring a bunch of rain to these folks in the coastal areas which would be great but there is the possibility that this tries to wind up especially since the ensemble means and the operational runs of all the models are starting to pick up on this and here's what's interesting folks can you guess what's going to happen if we have Cadia and that's the pronunciation I'm gonna I'm going to choose for this right now, Cadia. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That's what it's going to be. We've had a lot of discussion over this. I'm going to call her Cadia, okay, if that's all right with everybody. Um, here's Cadia coming in to the southwest Atlantic. What do you think is going to happen if we actually have Lee over here, sitting in here, while this is coming west? What this means, folks, is just ignore this trough up here okay just ignore that trough if we have the hurricane coming in here as a major and we have mischief developing in the western gulf can you guess where the outflow of Lee is going to be the upper level outflow curving anticyclonically well think about it we have the death ridge up here over New Mexico so the outflow is going to be shut off to the northwest Chances are it's not going to be too great to the northeast either. And so the outflow is actually going to be off to the southeast. We're going to see one of those big, strong, northerly upper flows over the western Caribbean curving down over Mexico here. You'll see all the cirrus streaming southward. What does this mean? It means that the outflow is sinking outside of the storm in this area. When it sinks, it warms and it dries. And when it warms, that means that heights get raised in here. So that means that the ridging is strengthening to the east of the system. This means two things. One, it's going to try to tug this northeast at the same time as the ridge is trying to pull it west, which means it's going to have those weak steering currents we talked about. But two, stronger ridging in here means that this goes out. Okay, Katia would miss the United States if Lee is sitting in here in a week's time and she makes it to 65 west. She would be gone. She would miss the United States. She might hit Bermuda. That's a whole different story. But she would leave if we had Lee sitting to her west here because of his outflow, strengthening the ridging between these two storms, regardless of this trough. Because if we had the ridge over here, there's going to be a weakness between that ridge and the ridge out in the Atlantic. So we are going to have a direct interaction between these two storms if the Gulf of Mexico mischief is still around in a week's time. So this is very interesting here, and it's why we should pay attention to this, not only because it's a threat to land first, but because it could also affect our dream storm out here what will be probably major hurricane Katia by this time so this is going to be very interesting to watch and again the waters in the Gulf of Mexico are very supportive of this this is the dark orange is over two degrees Celsius above normal rest of this is a one degree Celsius above normal the Gulf is ready to go here folks and all of the temperatures near are 31 Celsius or higher that's nearly 90 let's see what is that that's that's nearly 88 degrees Fahrenheit in here it's like bathtub water. So this is going to be ready to go. And uh, now we can look at Katia, the floater, showing how she's right over the north northeastern CDO is where her surface center is. Still some dry air off to the north, and she's moving merrily along pretty far north of west right now. And the NHC forecast continues to bring her west-northwest along the model consensus. And the NHC forecast basically mirrors the TVCN here. Notice where the TVCN is now. 24 hours later from yesterday morning, remember where the TVCN had it, 58.22, it was over in here, so it's already shifted a little bit farther west from yesterday, and remember the bet I had with it that this would end up at 62.20 by day 6 from yesterday, so we'll see if it continues shifting southwest to where I have it, and we'll have to see where this goes. I lined out the issues with the steering yesterday, I think I'll just leave it at that because this video has gone pretty long today. But if this gets in this area, we could have it. My gut feeling is that the most likely track is out between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda, but there is room for mischief to go on in here. But again, 
only if Lee is not sitting in here. If we have mischief going on in here, the ball game becomes a guarantee, I think, that this curves out east of the United States if we have a storm sitting in the western Gulf. So we will see how that goes, and we will be watching both of these systems very carefully. This is going to be affecting land first, folks, so... Katia can wait a little bit. The islands, again, may have to keep a wary eye on her, but it is nice to see her gaining so much latitude so early, so she will hopefully avoid the islands and end up in here where I think she'll be in a good five days or so. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.